just take a minute and center ourselves in that inner teacher. <clears throat> Thank you, God. We know the inner Christ is the teacher. So we tune in. What do you have to tell us from inside? Amen. Amen. All right. This month of June, we're going to be focusing on letting go. And as we let go of all those things that would weigh us down or that would block us from our good, that's when we do rise up. We're going to be focusing on uh, what a denial is. That's a good old-fashioned word. You heard one up here. A good old metaphysical term that means, uh, doesn't mean it in the sense that we use denial a lot of times nowadays, like pretending like there isn't a problem. Not that. It, that good old metaphysical term denial means that I deny that an outer situation has power to mess up my life. Plain and simple. So we're, in a sense, we're going to be working on denials all month. How about that? Good stuff, huh? Yeah. All right, good deal. All right, so this is the month, whatever's weighing you down, to let it go. So let's um, make this truth statement, and we're going to make it three times, and I invite you to engage your energy system. If you want to blink your eyes or wiggle your toes or if you want to make hand motions, you can follow me or make your own. Just don't whack your neighbor, right? Okay, that's the main thing. All right, so let's align with this three times. So here we go. I let go of any concern and allow good to unfold in my life. All right. I let go of any concern and allow good to unfold in my life. I let go of any concern and allow good to unfold in my life. And I invite you to be bold, as we were talking about today, and turn to your neighbor and affirm that truth for them. I can, I can feel that stuff flying off. Can you feel it? I can just feel it flying away. Okay. Huh? Hadn't whacked anybody yet? That's good. Thank you, Eric. I like it because Eric will talk to me up here. That's good. All right. All right. It's okay. You can talk to me as long as you don't say anything nasty. If you say something nasty, I'll tell you something. Anyway, so I got a story for you. So the, the youth group at the church was going to have a car wash because they wanted to raise some money so they could go to their regional rally. They were excited. So they got out there in the early in the morning, and they were having lots of customers there. They were on a good busy corner, and lots of people were coming in and getting their cars washed. Things were good until about 1 o'clock in the afternoon when it started clouding up. It started uh, raining really hard. And, then of course, you know, they didn't have anybody showing up. So one of the kids had a bright idea. They drew this big sign. They put an arrow on it that was pointing up, and the sign said, We wash, God rinses. <laughs> oh, good. That's a good thing to remember, right? Okay, so whenever we are willing in the midst of anything that feels like this isn't what I want, I don't like this. When we are willing to have a bigger point of view, when we're willing to have a greater point of view, a spiritually higher point of view, what happens is that solutions begin to become apparent, right? We know that, that when we feel, you know, like we're burdened down by financial problems, if we stick, stay in there and we just grind on it and worry and wonder about why is it that I don't have enough to do what I want to do or what I need to do, we know that the hole just gets deeper, right? But when we begin to say, well, okay, the facts are maybe I don't have enough money to do whatever it is that I need or want to do, and yet there is a higher point of view, you know? I wash and God what? Rinses. Rinses. So it's okay, God, so show me the rinse. Show me. Open me up to that rinse that you've got going on. Open me up to the divine abundance. Open me up to ideas that are going to uh, make it possible for me to let in the divine good that I am. 
let my mind and my heart be open and receptive to the reality of abundance because we truly do live in a sea of abundance. We are living uh, expressions of abundance and it is only what we carry on in our minds and the conditions that we build individually and collectively through what we've got going on in our minds that tells us there's not enough. So the opportunity anytime we feel that pinch of lack is to say, God, show me the rents. Open my mind. Lift me up to a higher point of view, right? The same thing is true in our relationships. If it's feeling like whatever relationships we've got, if it's with a partner, if it's with a family member, if it's with coworkers, if it's with the world or whatever's going on, if we feel like there's no love here, I don't like this, I feel like I'm getting harmed or I'm just resentful, I don't like this, we stay in that, we grind on it, what happens? The hole gets deeper, right? We get more miserable. God, show me the rents, right? Show me the rents. And so we begin to open our hearts and minds that there are divine solutions. The reality of this universe is divine love and harmony. That doesn't mean, by the way, that you have to hang out with everybody. What it does mean is that you get to release hanging out with them by holding them to you with resentment. What a concept, right? Who, who's the closest people to you? The ones that you resent. <laughs> They're the ones you got right here. And if you're sick and tired of resentment and if you're sick and tired of feeling, you know, like things aren't going so well and with people, let go of the resentments. You don't need it. Who needs it? You don't need it. Let go of it and open up to the prob possibility, the probability, the reality of divine love and harmony. And when you pray for those that you've called enemies, meaning those that you think are out to get you, and maybe they are, sometimes they are, you know, but so what? Let go of it. And when you do that, when you give love in return for error, when you give love in return for your own resentment, guess what happens? You're free. And things sort themselves out, however they need to sort out for the highest good of everybody in terms of how you're relating in this, you know, material realm. It sorts itself out. But you're free because you are not hanging on to it anymore. It's the same thing in our health. If we grind about how awful whatever it is is, then the hole just gets deeper. But when we release it and go, okay, it is what it is. I love my body temple. It's a beautiful body temple. It is whole and perfect. It's exactly as it needs to be for what it is that I'm here to do. Because our body temple is the opportunity to be here in earth experience and to grow and learn. And when we affirm that and we do that, we find solutions open up. And we find that though we may have pain and we may have challenge, we don't suffer because we have a different attitude and we find that good comes into us, that there are solutions that work for our good, that bring forth what is needed in terms of our body temple. That's the gift of knowing that who we are. Today is Ascension Sunday, A-S-C-E-N-S-I-O-N. -S -S it's a celebration today of Jesus' ascension. And we're going to talk about that a little bit in a moment here and talk about what that has to do with us. Because I'll tell you, it has everything to do with us. Because that same ascension power that is the spiritual power that is within Jesus is the same spiritual power that is within us. Jesus is a divine human. Guess who you are? A divine human. The deal is, he was a lot more awake than I am. I'll give him that, all right? And he opened the way for us in consciousness. He knew his oneness with God, and he knows that. And that is how it is that he is with us, that he is alive with us in this spiritual atmosphere, in the spiritual reality, in the spiritual realm of life. Not to be worshipped up on a pedestal, but to walk with us, to befriend us, to show us the way. That's why in unity we speak of Jesus Christ as the way shower, that he opened the way in consciousness for us to know who we are too, that we too are divine spiritual beings. Now that's power. 
if you don't, we, we are called to live with spiritual vision. And we often think of it, and it's part of it, that spiritual vision means, okay, what do we, what's the future hold? What is God telling us for our future? And that is a part of spiritual vision. But that's just really the tip of the iceberg. The real meaning of spiritual vision is to get it that here and now I am a spiritual being. And I see myself, my vision of myself, my experience of myself is that I am a spiritual being. I am not helpless. I am not alone. I am not in lack and in poverty. Those may or may not be facts on the outer, but that is not the spiritual truth. And as we are willing to open up to that power, as we are willing to live with spiritual vision, then we are transformed. That is the Jesus Christ message. That is the Jesus Christ life. The power is within you. You know, we tend to look outside of us for power, right? You ever do that? Where is it? Can I get some? It's out there somewhere. You know, we have various ways that we attempt to get it. One of my stories that I love, and I wrote about it this week in the, in the heart notes and the uh, email that goes out and uh, put it up on Facebook, on our Facebook page, is The Wizard of Oz. You know that story, The Wizard of Oz, you know that, that Dorothy um, gets caught up in a tornado in Kansas, by the way. All right. <laughs> she, she and Tyler. Anyway, anyway. It brought, it brought to mind for me the year that long ago, when I was living, I was attending uh, the University of Kansas graduate school, and it was April, and it was tornado season, and myself and some of my fellow students were under the table one day because the tornadoes were coming through. But anyway, so, um, but Dorothy and Toto got caught up in a tornado and, um, and landed, you know, somewhere in the land of Oz. And of course, she was distraught. She wanted to get back home. And in the process, you know that she met up with three friends, right? Who were they? The, the scarecrow? Right, okay. And all of them were like feeling like, man, I am in big trouble and I am in big lack, right? The ten men wanted a what? Yes. The scarecrow wanted what? And the cowardly lion wanted what? And what did Dorothy want? She wanted to go home, right? She wanted to go home. So they were all majoring like big time lack, you know, and it's like fun. They were having fun because they were in lack and it's fun for us to watch it. It wasn't fun for them. So they, they uh, heard from the good witch, Glinda, right, that if they got to Oz, they got to the city of Oz, and if they got to see the great Oz, that he had all this power and he was going to give them all what they wanted, right? Well, you know what happened? They got there, and they went to the big throne room, and there's the big Oz and the smoke and all this business and the big head and the whole thing. And he tells them to go do what? Get the witch's broomstick, right? Not Glinda the Good Witch, but the Wicked Witch of the West to go get her broomstick and bring it back to him, and then he would consider if he would give them what they wanted, right? So, and then you know what happened? They went and they had all these adventures with the, I love the flying monkeys. They're my favorite one. They're favorite. Okay. So the, uh, <laughs> they're just so bad. They're really awful. Okay. Anyway, so, so they go and they have all these adventures and, and kind of almost by happenstance because Dorothy's trying to put the fire out because the witch caught this, I think it was her or the monkeys or somebody caught the scarecrow on fire. She throws water on him to put out the fire and what else happened? It melted the witch, right? I'm melting. Okay. So, so <laughs> all right. So they get her broomstick, and, um, and, and they go back to Oz, and you know what they find out, because Toto, they come, and, and Oz kind of doesn't know what to do, because he's really surprised that they got the broomstick. He figured they would go away. He figured they can't do this, and he figured they'd go away, so he wouldn't have to deal with them, right? But they go, and Toto pulls the curtain back, and what does Toto find? It's just a guy back there, right, pulling these levers. And it turns out he was even a guy that had gotten lost himself. That's how he ended up in Oz. And he sort of got a job. He needed a job, so he kind of created this whole thing, you know, with Oz. But then he had enough decency to, to at the bottom, even though he was a bit of a fraud, he had the decency to, to go, you know, I'm going to tell them what's really true. And you know what he did, right? He had a little ceremony, and what did he do? He gave them each a gift, right? And he said, you know, basically, you already have a heart, tin man. Scarecrow, you already have brains. 
And he said, cowardly lion, you already have courage. Because they did. And in that process of getting the witch's broomstick, they had all those characteristics in them anyway, but in the process of it, they developed them, right? Because they had to step out. They had to be bold. They had to step out and be who they were. They had to develop themselves. And then in the end, you know, he uh, told uh, Dorothy he was, because he had a hot air balloon. That, I guess he'd had a crash. That's how he ended up in Oz, I think. But um, so he was going to take Dorothy back to Kansas in his hot air balloon. But you know what happened? She was in there, and Toto was in there. But then Toto, they were getting ready to lift off, but Toto saw a cat. And he jumps out, and she's distraught. She's not going to leave Toto. So she jumps out, and he floats off in his hot air balloon. So for a minute there, you know, Dorothy is distraught, but Glinda appears, Glinda the Good Witch. And what does she tell her to do? Click your heels three times and say, there's no place like home. And she arrives home. That's the power that is within all of us. That's the truth. It's not out there. It is out there, but, but that's because power is everywhere. The power that we have the power to love, the power to think with divine intelligence, the power to be bold and step out with courage. That's already in us. The power to go home, to be at home, to be reassured, to be amongst those that we love. That's already within us. And if we're going to find it, we're going to have to ascend. We're going to have to step out into it. We're going to have to get out of the little box that says you're not enough or you need to hide out or don't you remember what happened last time when you tried that? you got to get out of that. And the, with the power of God, we can. The beautiful story of, of Jesus Christ and the beautiful life of Jesus Christ is that that's what he was always doing. He was always stepping out boldly. He was always stepping out beyond what the rules were that said, you're just a little nobody, so just sit down and shut up. He did not buy into that, not one bit, and I'm sure he struggled. It wasn't like he was just like, oh, it's all easy, it's all good. I don't think so. You know, many times it's recorded he spent all night in prayer, right? And in the Garden of Gethsemane, he sweat great drops of blood. He said, God please take this away from me he struggled just like we struggle and he always in the end because he was willing to open up to the power of God one bit at a time he stepped out and he found the power within him the story of the ascension uh, which I'm going to share with you in the is in the gospel of Luke is that the uh, you know there'd been obviously there was the crucifixion all of the people, the disciples that were, had been following him were, of course, distraught. They were like, we had this, all these hopes in him, right? They were like a collection of individuals following a personality. And they were learning along the way. He was teaching them, and they were learning, and they were getting it. But it was still a collection of individuals following uh, a personality, in a sense. Not because he was cultivating that, but because that's just where that's all they could get at that point. That's all their understanding that they had. And so then, of course, happened the resurrection, which we celebrated at Easter, and they were astonished. You know, they said, oh, something happened here. Uh, he didn't, th this, these hopes we had, these dreams we had are not destroyed. Because you can imagine how devastating that would be. They'd had, they had such high hopes with Jesus, such high hopes for their lives to get better, such high hopes for things to get better in their country and in their world. And then it's like, gosh, a terrible, awful thing happened. But then they began to discover through their resurrection, no, something good's happened. Not, we don't know what it is. Again, you can understand resurrection however you want to. There's many ways to understand it. The bottom line is something amazing happened, and they discovered those. People said, uh, no, it's not, it's not dead. The dreams aren't dead. The power's not dead. God's not dead. The life's not dead. We don't understand it, but we know something good is afoot, and somehow we're being called to this. And then the next uh, action, then Jesus would appear to the disciples in his resurrected expression. Again, you can understand that however you want to, literally, metaphysically, mystically, symbolically, it doesn't matter. The point is that they were having experiences of the risen quality of life 
we have that too. Do you not? You may or may not say it's Jesus Christ, but all of us, anytime we overcome a problem, anytime we push through boldly to manifest a dream, we too are having an experience of life's rising in us. We are rising to a new point of view, and it is that life force, it is the spirituality that is within us. And so after those uh, appearances, um, the ascension happens, and the ascension means when Jesus went uh, at, in the final moment into complete uh, spiritual expression. He left the earthly expression in, in the way that they were seeing him in material form, and he went completely into spirituality. He rose up not to abandon them, but to call them to themselves. Let me share this with you. This is in uh, the Gospel of Luke 24. It's the very end of the book of Luke. So then he, so uh, Jesus says, and see, I'm sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. That's next week. That's Pentecost. We'll talk about that next week because next week is Pentecost Sunday. So come back. We'll talk about that. Okay. And, but then he goes on. And then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And blessing just means to increase the good. And while Jesus was blessing them, while he was increasing the good, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And that means that he was carried into a different state of consciousness. We understand that in unity, that heaven consciousness is that awareness of God. It's not a place up on a cloud somewhere. It's the awareness of of God right here and right now. It's a different dimension of understanding. It is the rising up. It is God rinsing, right? That's heaven. Okay, and then they, and they worshiped him, meaning they revered this amazing experience, and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and there they were continually in the temple blessing God. They were ecstatic because they caught that glimpse of who they were, and they caught that glimpse of what they were being called to. They were starting to wake up to the reality that this isn't about Jesus. This isn't about putting this personality up on a pedestal. This is about him opening the way for us to understand who we are. And we can't be little children anymore. That was the other, you know, takeaway from this, is that he's telling us, you, you guys got to grow up. You've got to step up into who you are. And boy, at Pentecost, he, really, they got the message, okay? Really big time. This is the beginning of the sense of community, the community of Christ. People beginning to go, oh, I guess it's about me, isn't it? I guess I'm going to have to step up into who I am. I guess I'm going to have to do the work to let go of these ideas or whatever I've got going on with me that weighs me down. I guess it's up to me to start opening my mind in bigger ways to the reality of my spiritual life. I guess it's up to me to rise. Let's pray. We take a moment right now and feel that presence of God, for it is within us and it is with us. God, we give thanks for who we are. We give thanks for Jesus Christ. We give thanks for one another. We give thanks for the reality in our world that we're all your expressions. Give us the courage to rise. And so it is. Amen. <laughs>